Facebook Live. Welcome back, YouTube. We are at the Post Slims for Fury Professional Grappling 1. We just witnessed an amazing main event okay. with Danielle Kelly getting a submission. And now we're doing the Post Slims. Back with my man, Jay. We are back. Man, what a fun main what card. What a main card, main event. On to the Post Slims now. Big boys starting off. Heavyweight brown belt, seven minutes. Dennis Gunick's on the mat right now. Coming out now, Billy Conway at a His grindhouse. Out little the red corner, no, no a little bit about Billy. Uh, Bam Bam, as they affectionately call him. Uh, fought for us a few times as an amateur. Used to seeing him at, at 205. He's, he's up to 225. Really good guy. Yeah, and, and strong, man. Strong he like is an a ox. Big, strong boy. And let me tell you, Gunnick. <laughs> All right, and again, this is a brown belt match, so we're looking at seven minutes here. All submissions are a go. Rocking the booth, BJJ. Saw James earlier. I asked him, when is he getting in? All right. How nice would it be to get Booth back on that mat? Oh, that'd be crazy. Pushing forward immediately is Conway. Looking for that underhook. See Gunnick trying to fight to his left arm underneath there. He's got that collar tie. Ooh, looking to pull back to snap down. Man, Conway's not going to be an easy person yeah. to snap down. Absolutely not. You think there's a chance at a guard pull? No. <laughs> no. I mean, I hate to say never, but no. Pushing forward. Really fun prelims, man. Great main card. Now we're oh on to the post so limbs. Awesome. Place still packed. Place is still packed. Incredible. Still standing room here. Fury Pro 1. Holding center position, trying to throw by. Now is Conway. Both guys, collar and elbow. Head to head, pushing forward. Conway looking for that underhook. That looked like Gunnick was going to. Look for some little quick arm bar there. Conway quickly got his arm free. Still that inside tie, trying to throw by his Gunnick. And not much happening where a judge can go either, you know, either way with this yet, not, you know. Yeah, no, not yet. Definitely not yet. What are we, almost two minutes in. I'll tell you though, sometimes with these big guys, listen, you just don't want to end up underneath. No. You just don't want to end up on the bottom no. of one of these guys. So, I mean, <laughs> there's some of these matches where they'll end up on the feet in a big push and push uh, battle back and forth, you know, not wanting to end up on the bottom. Yeah, I mean, one mistake could cost you, you know, you may not, you may never be able to get up. Still holding center position here. I want to get Billy back in the MMA. I don't know what his future plans are. Think he'll stay at heavyweight or go back down 205? I'm he hoping. looks good at heavyweight. He looks good at heavyweight, <laughs> but I'm hoping he goes back to 205. <laughs> Big fights tomorrow night, right? CFFC oh, 98 man. right here. Oh, man. Really excited about that whole main card as well. Oh, there's the snap down by Gunnick, and he's going to get around to the hips. Conway staying based out. You jinxed him, Jay. I know. Look, or, now, let's see what Gunnick does here. He's looking to drag here. Oh, look at, looking for that knee bar. That wide base is going to make him very difficult to elevate. Yeah. But man, if Gunnick takes an angle off to one side, strips the hands, looking to get away here is Conway. Oh, he's on a Kimura now. He doesn't have it locked up yet, but he's stripping the grip for it. Now watch when he locks his his hands together. Oh man. A big movement here. Yep, there it is. Good call, Jay. Yeah, good call. Man, as soon as he locked them hands up, it's done a good job of scrambling himself to get to his knees yep. to and stay out of trouble. But, uh, but you called it. You know, great use of Billy to, to come more, not only as a serious submission attempt, but it got him out of the bad position he was in. Yeah, he's one on one trying to roll that wrist down. Gunnick rolls himself through, looking to go for a leg off that. 
Nice trying for, entry a knee bar. for a big guy here. Trying to turn the leg over, man. That's yeah, getting Conway's hips away from him is going to be difficult. He's going to get himself back out to a turtle. Regis will move them back to center. In the same position. Yeah, shame for Billy because he was right in front of James, his uh, cornerman. So right, able to get that instruction yeah. right in front of you. Oh, look at him trying to trap that arm. Oh, and it turned it into a single. single nice leg, job yeah. by Gunnick. Front head position, head and arm trapped. Oh. Gunnick keeping them hands in a position where they can fight that grip. And like how Billy's using his weight, put a little extra weight on him, make him carry you for, you know, a little bit. It's exhausting, man. Yeah. I mean, just like you said, just carrying that weight. Yep. Having somebody like, because it's not even the weight, it's kind of like understanding how to use it and make it feel twice as heavy. Absolutely. And you see Gunnick doesn't want to bring his hands up to break that grip because then it's going to force the, his upper body to the ground. And being flattened out isn't where you want to be here with Conway. No. Great job of breaking the grip so at least he ends up in side control. Yeah. And this is probably where Gunnick does not want to be right now. No. You thought the pressure was bad for the turtle. <laughs> <laughs> and Billy's got a couple options here, right? Maybe a Kimura or maybe go north-south. He's got that far side Kimura, key lock. He can move the mount from here, head and arm. You know, I'll tell you, with these big guys, man, and somebody strong like Billy, once they isolate that arm uh, on that far side, man, it doesn't take a ton of movement to get the finish. Yeah. Referee call in action, which is, you know. Oh, we haven't had one yet tonight. No? We haven't had a stall call yet tonight. Now, I don't know if that was a warning or if yeah. that was just to get moving. Maybe once Billy maybe to improve a little bit. Gunnick starts moving from the bottom again. It's going to be really difficult to get yeah. Conway now, off yeah. that position. And then you got to worry about the sweat now and a little bit of fatigue setting in, maybe going hard for a few minutes. Gunnick keeps trying to enter on this leg, too. So he keeps trying to sneak around to the back, and he does. Gets again around to the other side. Oh, and looking for a, a heel hook here. Great camera that's an angle. Yeah, I'll tell you. Conway able to slip that heel. Steps his legs back back. around. Looking for the back here. He's got to watch that knee bar, though. He immediately crossed yep. his feet to protect it. Oh, oh now he's oh, separated. That's too Good high. Good job. Yeah. Gunnick was ready for it. And I'll tell you, Conway knew as soon as those legs came unlocked, he had to get that knee line free, and he did a great job of it. Coming up on uh, 30 seconds, I think Gunnick's got to really do something dramatic to sway the judges his way or... You know, get a submission. He's going to have to. Uh, man, at this point, it's probably going to have to be a submission. Conway has spent a tremendous amount of time on the top position. Even that first couple minutes, though, he, he was still active in trying to go past. Although Gunnick did, you know, get him, get down, yeah. get to the back. Wasn't able to finish from it. And again, that Kamora reversal has got to count, you know, oh, yeah. in, in Billy's favor. Pushing forward, short time here. I wouldn't want to be one of those guys on the outside. No. When those big boys come close. Last double, take him right onto your lap, yeah. and we're going to a decision. Yeah, I, I like our seats up here, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> Billy Conway, Dennis Gunnick. All right, here it was with the body lock. Here it was. Now watch. Once his hands were able to connect, watch how quick Billy moves with this Gamora. Beautiful. Conway just immediately turned yeah. with it. And I'll tell you, good job of Gunnick of keeping the wrist in front of his body so that he didn't get it put behind his right. back and finished. And like you said, he was able to get to his knees. Yeah. Rolling over. Little leg attempt here, but again, Conway able to get that leg free. I think Off we're going to go attempt. We're going to go to Jason with the announcement of the winner. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner by decision out of the red corner. Fun match, though. Fun match. Very fun match. Billy Conway, Booth BJJ, Grindhouse, Great MMA. Nickname. Bam Bam. Great. Big Bam Bam. He looks like a Bam Bam. He does. He looks right out of the Flintstones. He could <laughs> fit back then. Yeah, moving right on. Next one.
So we got a really, really fun key match coming up right now. Heavyweight brown belt, no gi, seven minute match, or I'm sorry, uh, a 215 pound brown belt key match, seven minutes. Uh, Brendan Peck at a, a movement art BJJ, taking on Daniel Sala at a precision. Uh, man, both these guys very slick with submissions. I love the gi. Yeah, I love yeah, the gi. CM was saying the same thing. He, he likes the gi. So I'll, cool. I'll tell you, the coolest gi submission I ever... <clears throat> Brendan Peck movement art. Begin where to make his way out. The coolest... Uh, and, and man, listen, I have probably called three, 4,000 jujitsu matches. Plenty in the gi. Daniel Sala definitely has the coolest submission that I've ever called in a gi. It's his cowboy choke, gunslinger choke. And uh, I didn't know what to call it at the time. I called it a dope choke. <laughs> but they got some slick... Uh, they got some slick stuff from the gi here. And he's taking on Brendan Peck out of movement art, jujitsu. Seen a couple of these guys on the main card with the gi. Yeah, so it's his coaches. His two coaches were the ones on the main card. Uh, Nick Salas, Daniel Myra, his coaches. Sala under the tutelage of Rob Shire at a precision jiu-jitsu. Black gi for Peck, white gi for Sala. Peck pulls, but immediately has that left-hand grip, trying to pull to a closed guard. Under hooks here, he'll be see if he looks for that sweeper, looks dip that leg down and open the guard. Sala keeping a very strong base from the feet, not following him down. Daily Heaven now looking to invert. Sala sits on it. Trying to bolo underneath is Peck, and he's gonna get to it. He's got that left hand already so across. So smooth, yeah, too man. smooth. His left hand was already across on the next. Sala fights himself out to that single. I knew this was gonna be a scrap. He elevates that leg. Let's see if he can mat return here. Nice roll through by Peck so he doesn't take a hard fall. Good job by Sala though. Oh yeah, very good. To recover back yep. to a single from that uh, position. Now Jay, what, for the audience at home, what, what, how, you know, obviously besides the gi and the no gi, but what are some stuff when, 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 you're, when we have two gi grapplers, what should we be looking for that's different than a, a no gi? So the biggest thing is the ability to grip to the collars, the sleeves, and things like that. No gi is much more loose and where our grips uh, are having to go around larger parts of the body. Right. Whereas in, in gi, our grips are on very small parts, but can, but can uh, uh, what you call it, take up a lot of ground, if you will. You know, a, a single grip on a collar can almost control the entire upper body if put incorrectly. And you can see that these fighters got their fingers taped. Explain to the <laughs> audience, Jay, why, why are their fingers taped? Because at their young ages, they probably have arthritis in these fingers because <laughs> of how much gi jiu-jitsu they do and how much gripping they do. So that tape not only helps a little bit with the grip, but uh, listen, it's definitely helping their fingers from being sore. Right. <laughs> Trying to walk around on this pass here. Nice leg entry. Passes it to 50-50. Sala looking to push forward to take a standing position from 50-50. It's gonna be much easier to pass this 50-50 from a standing position. Nice elevation by Peck to answer back. So and they remain 50-50. And with the, with the gi, you can actually use the gi as like almost a weapon. Oh, or in a, you know, sure. an assistant with the choke. Yeah, strangle each other. But I mean, you know, uh, um, in, in the gi matches that we saw, the Salah's, uh, Salah's setup and uh, Myra's setup both came off beautiful gi grips to a single side that set up the attack to the far side. Nice. Back to the feet here again. Looking to invert is, is Peck. Trying to go underneath, but he's almost to the back here. Sala keeping that right hand deep inside. Now Peck will posture up a bit more halfway through this match. We're at the four minute mark. Top position in the black E for movement arts, Brandon Peck. Bottom position, precision jiu jitsu's, Daniel Sala. Trying to roll through here. Steps back, looking for a knee bar here. Oh, he's going to get oh. the tap. Quick knee bar finish on the Good step match. back. Very awesome nice match. match. Knee bar finish for Movement Arts. Brendan Peck.
Right, Beautiful. Good decision. And we'll watch a replay here. Our man Jason will announce the winner. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner by submission at 3 minutes and 14 seconds, Bia Nibar out of the red corner, Brandon Pan. When you do that, just give him the black belt, right? <laughs> Beautiful finish for Peck. I mean, you're, you're brown belt, submitting brown belt, so give him his black. All right, here we go. Let's check this replay. From 50-50. You see Salah trying to open up, a nice little step back, able Beautiful. to slip the leg inside, extends quickly, gets the tap quick. Yeah, that hyperextension was coming on very, very quickly. You saw Salah have to tap immediately. Really fun match. That was awesome. I, I like the game. Yeah. 195 pound purple belt, no gi. Six minute match coming up. Caleb Livingston out of the vault, taking on Daishi Goto out of Web BJJ. Again, going to be another fun one the here. Mat, out of the green corner, representing 50-50, Caleb Livingston. Caleb Livingston, representing 50-50, also trains out of the vault. Making his way to the stage here at Fury Pro 1, Fury Pro Grappling. Here at 2300 Arena, Jay Rigobuto here at Arias Garcia. I love having the, I love having the shot of all the Beautiful. champions from CFFC Beautiful. behind. Out of the red corner, representing Web BJJ, Daishi Goto. Daishi Goto in the black, making his way to the stage. Purple for Livingston. Again, purple match. So this will be six minutes. I expect fireworks, Jay. Yeah, I do too. I do too. Uh, Livingston's got wrestling experience. Godo's got wrestling experience. Uh, I, I'm not going to be surprised if Someone Livingston pull does guard. sit. Okay. I, listen, coming up underneath oh, somebody go. like Godo is much easier to do than wrestle him head on. Yeah. Very true. Keeps your level lower. You see Godo immediately. Looking for some kind of upper body, upper body control, upper body movement. Trying to stack, keeping in that supine position is Livingston. Not allowing Goto to get that weight on top of him. A little slap there. <laughs> this isn't combat jujitsu, last I checked, but hey. Yet. <laughs> yeah, very good, Jay. That's the next step. See Livingston trying to stick that. Leg in the middle and trying to come up. Trying to get a hold of that leg. See, you'll see how he comes up from that butterfly once he touches the leg to try to push back. Like I said, getting underneath Goto is a difficult thing to do. Flips him over, looking to get right to the back from here is Goto. Both hands underneath, connected around the waist of Livingston. Livingston trying to split the grip here. Goto really should try to get his grips higher up so it's controlling a head and arm. And at that point, it'd be much easier for him to get leg control and Livingston able to work his way free. Right, and being wrestlers, they're both used to that position. Oh, yeah. Staying butterfly, Goto will go to his knees momentarily. He's trying to push forward. Uh, is Goto, he's gonna have to, he's trying for that upper body control, but he's gonna have to get over top of the lower half of Livingston at yeah. some point to pass. Yeah. If you're gonna go through him, if you're gonna go through him. Now he's on almost on a guillotine here. There he is now. Try to connect him. again, Livingston. Great job of using his hands to make sure that Goto doesn't connect them, right? Now Goto did connect them here. He's sitting to his side, trying to roll himself through. Livingston sitting through, putting that shoulder in there. He'll be able to rotate through. Goto now with better upper body control. Ah, actually, he's only one on one. Didn't come over top of that shoulder, and that's going to allow Livingston to keep circling back. We are on the eve of CFFC 98 uh, tomorrow night. If you guys have not, subscribe to UFC Fight Pass. All right, Evan Cutson. 
Johan uh, uh, Linus, Linus, right? Oh, Canadian, undefeated. That's going to be a fun one. Good sprawl here by Goto. And again, I, I like Livingston's approach to how he's trying to attack from the bottom coming up. Now, he hasn't had any success with it just yet, but I believe he, it's the correct attack in this right. match for him. But here is it. He's oh, attacking. Almost snapped. He's, he's attacking up top now. He's right. not, you know. Man, I'll tell you, he's moving Daishi's head out of the way pretty good here. You know, push him back to center here. Ooh. And I love the amount of staff that CFC yeah. put around the mats smart. to make sure We're nothing smart. happens, yeah. man. Tons of staff around the mats. So now he'll use it to take top position. He was able to use that wrestle up to move from bottom to top. So we're, we're, we're going to see what Goto has on the bottom now. Yeah, now we're going to check out his guard. He's butterfly, and I'll tell you, Livingston is is leaning his, his body weight over, so he doesn't really care about the that Sweet Goto being able, yeah, being able to elevate him because yeah. he's laying his hips right over top. But I, I like how Caleb switched it up. Yeah. You know, started on his you know his bottom, and then he, he, he didn't, like you said, no success really there, and then now he attacked from the top. And that's strong snap down. Oh, yeah. Dicey answers back with a strong snap down of his own. Chin strap. Now he's double unders here. Switches that left hand off to a chin strap. Caleb. Caleb Livingston able to get free. Still pushing forward even right there at the edge. Let's get them guys back to yeah, center. Yeah, that, that, back this to is center. making me nervous. Yeah, right? <laughs> That's an expensive camera right there. It looks <laughs> not. All right. Yeah, and that little scramble is going to almost end Goto up on top. Now he's he's got the hands connected here. And Livingston's right hand is inside. He's dragging that right leg back through. And he's using that left hand to try to fight that grip, and he will get that grip free. He's deep underneath on that leg, going to come out the back door. He's going to end up with another sweep. Livingston, wow. beautiful sweep to get back to top. So nice guillotine attempt by Goto, but Livingston, man, with, with a couple sweeps here. Ends up on top. Yeah. And not scrambled sweeps either. Like, no. you know, premeditated. Premeditated sweeps. It's another tough one, Jay. Yeah, it is. If you're a judge, this is another tough one. Yeah, no, I'm not a judge. <laughs> no, we don't want that job. <laughs> I do not want that job. We don't want that job. Back to his feet here, holding on to that single is Livingston. Let me check the time here. Yeah, we're short time four five. Say, oh, chin strap. Look at that brutal guillotine here. Livingston again gets that left hand inside. He's going to be able to break this grip. Yeah, he's been in this position before. Yeah, back to his knees. Go to a swept last down. time, but it didn't happen this time. Man, Livingston didn't stay. It doesn't stay uh, uh, on his on his butt this time. This time he's looking to get up and active. So listen, you got a couple good uh, guillotine attempts yeah. from, from Goto, but you got two really beautiful sweeps from Livingston. Again, Gets. it's whatever the, the judges prefer, whatever yeah. they'll give more you know, scoring to. Coming up on uh, 10 seconds, they might not have enough before they reset to do anything significant. Yeah, right? Yeah, very short time here. Oh, I'm very interested. That's a third attempt now for Goto. Tell you that third attempt might have did it. Maybe a little extra time. Yeah, Livingston rolls through. All right. Close one. Going to the decision. Man, some really, really fun stuff in that match. Yeah, I mean, if That's you're counting one. on submission attempts alone, Goto, like we yeah. said, had three of them. Um, maybe it might have been close with the second one. All right, here we go. Here's the guillotine attempt. Off that single, man, that grip was so strong, yeah. it just collapsed the whole single leg. Yeah. Drove himself right to top. Goto is a strong man. Look at that, trying to move to mount here. All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, now winner by decision. Out of the red corner, Naoki! Yeah, we kind of saw that one coming, Jay. Um, not that uh, Caleb was outmatched, it's just Goto had more of the submission attempts. Yeah, yeah. Again, both those guys did very good things in that match. They should both be very happy. But uh, Goto is going to come away with the win on them submission attempts. And we are moving on. 
All right, we have 175 pound purple belt no gi match coming up. Six minutes. Al Bruce, 2 a.m., a member of DDS, Harbor BJJ. Taking on Bryant Pabone at a 10th planet, Bethlehem. Again, this will be a six minute match here at Fury Pro One, man. Fury Professional Grappling. The inaugural show. This should be a good one. Brian uh, yeah, this Pabone is Brian coming in Pabone. first. Brian Pabone, 10th line of Bethlehem, makes his way to the stage. Al Bruce Tuev, the member of DDS, owner of Harbor BJJ. Some grapplers are having issues noticing the steps right in front of them when they, <laughs> when they come out. Listen, we didn't say jujitsu guys were smart. Yeah, fighting guys aren't the smartest, <laughs> but you know, we we're love good them. at strangling and breaking limbs. Yeah. <laughs> Al Bruce making his way to the stage. Again, yeah, member of the Dan and her death squad. Dan and her death squad. Dan and her death squad makes his way down to Puerto Rico. Actually, he just got back not too long ago. He runs Harbor BJJ down in down in Mays Landing. Again, this is a. Purple belt match, so it will be six minutes. Now Bruce in the camo, green for Pabone. Holding center position is Pabone as now Bruce circles, has some movement, looking for feints. This is what we call, you know, the feeling out process. Just trying to see where they're at, their range. And on that collar now. Oh, nice Ooh, little foot like sweep that. attempt. By Al Bruce. Oh, nice level change there for Pabone, answering back to that foot sweep. It was nice about that foot sweep uh, by Al Bruce is he did look for an Imanari there. He did it off an indirect grip. I mean, he didn't even have a, a grip. It was Brian or Pabone's grip. Right. Looking to drive in, gets to the body lock. Al Bruce looking to Uchimata here, trying to elevate that hip. Nice. And he's going to do it. He's going to end up in the closed guard of Pabone. Up, immediately trying to get himself up. Pabone trying to break that posture. You see Al Bruce looking for that inside control. You're going to see him look to split those legs. There he goes. He'll stay, keep that leg inside, looking to hop right over top. Upper body control. Good job of Pabone by getting that butterfly back in. Create, create his space. Loosen that upper body control. Forces Al Bruce back to the feet. Oh, nice little wrestle up to the single here Ooh. for Pabone. Yeah, look to kick like out that kick, thing. right? We're not at Cage <laughs> Fury Combat <laughs> Jiu-Jitsu yet. Nice little inside leg kick. Stay <laughs> tuned. There's the sit for Al Bruce. Now he's going to try to work his guard from here. Pabone will follow him right down into the half guard. Knee shield here coming across the body. There's two AF. Brian trying to pull forward, but again, that that shin in front. Making that very, very difficult. You see him trying to force that left foot inside to peel yeah. that right leg free. And Al Bruce will use that to take top position. Oh, sweep right back almost by Pabon. Trying to hop over top is Al Bruce, and it'll get him into side control. Pabon able to collect that leg back to get himself to a half guard. Hands are connected on this head and arm here for Al Bruce. Oh, look at that. Bryant raises that left arm to make that right arm not be able to reach and connect. Beautiful. Very good, simple defense yep. by Pavone. And if you're someone like me, you might not have noticed it. Right? I, had, I need someone like you to explain to me. <laughs> Just simply raised his arm, man, and it, and it stops that connection from being able to yeah. happen. Science. Sometimes you just got to science it. It's science. <laughs> Back to the feet. Harvard Jiu-Jitsu's Al Bruce to have 
Oh, nice single Ooh. here. Tenth point of Bethlehem's Brian Pavone. I get nervous when they're that close. Right? Yeah, you know, I wonder if they do in the moment. Or if yeah. in that moment they can't get it. I'm I sure think they some feel do. It. I think they feel it. Ooh. Oh, man, looking for a flying armbar? Yeah. Or, or, Jay-Z Kawakante does it a lot, and they call he calls it a, a G-lock, I think, where he just throws that leg over top. A little different than a flying arm bar, more of a step over. Now Bruce pinning that top leg, rolling over on a knee bar. He'll remain seated. Pabone immediately trying to cut through. Two minutes remain here. Top position for Pabone. Framing to that cross shoulder is Tuaev. Really makes it difficult for, for Pabon to close that distance. Yeah. Looking on the Kimura, he's going to get it locked. Let's see Pabon look to step over. Let's see if he tries to turn it into an arm bar. He's able to pull posture and pull that free. Al Bruce right back to half guard with the shin in front. Posting. Really didn't improve his position that much. I, you know, I don't know if he was trying to use it for an escape. Back to the feet here, trying to cut that knee through. I'm telling you, just that single frame that Al Bruce is putting on that far shoulder yep. is it, it, complicating so much for, for Pabon. It limits his options. Really does. I mean, it stops you from being able to break the posture down. There he goes. Now he's trying to skip past. Al Bruce able to recover immediately. Now Pabon will sit. Now back to the feet. So we're, we're 45 seconds yeah. here. I mean, I think someone can steal it right now. Yeah, oh man, this is as close as it gets. Yeah, this yeah. is very close. <laughs> uh, the, the match can be decided in these last uh, 30 seconds. Oh nice. man, little scramble there. And, and Pat Bone's gonna end up not only on top, but almost mounted off this. If he can get his shoulders below those knees and get to this pass, it'll put him in good position. Al Bruce pulled those, retracted those knees back so tight. Pass was going to be incredibly difficult. Yeah. Very short time here. Bottom position for Pabon as he keeps scooting forward, looking for that neck one more time. And they're going to go to the judge's decision. All right. Harvard Jiu Jitsu's Al Bruce 2 a.m. 10th Planet at Bethlehem's Bryant Pabone. Take it to the judge's decision here at Fury Pro 1. Check out a replay real quick. Level change. Oh, that was fake to that double into the body lock. Went to that Uchimata here, right? Yeah, look at that. Hip and out. Great job. Able to put him to the mat. Ended up inside the closed guard there. Very good counter. Then we see here at the end him trying to go past. That was that little scramble. Yeah, I, I think this might have won it. Stepped over, yeah. Put him into a planet. Put it into a, a pretty dominant yeah. position there. I think Pabon as far as won this it match that. goes, Jason has the results. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner by decision, out of the red corner, all Bruce Al Bruce, 2 a.m. at a Harvard Jiu Jitsu is going to take it with yeah, the I decision can't. victory. I can't argue that, though. Yeah, oh, that was a close two one. 2 a.m. had yeah, his moments. Pabon sure. had his moments. Yeah, very nice. Don't, and again, that big takedown. Yeah, that I don't. That big Uchimata might have. Yeah, don't want to be a judge, Jay. No, no. Don't want to be a judge. Man, I say it almost every match. Now we got 155 pound purple belts coming out. Six-minute no-gi match. Ryan Stark out of the vault, taking on Crazy 88's James Mullen. James Mullen actually made his pro debut for uh, CFFC um, at our last event. Usually a 35er. The cage, representing HOA, James Mullen. Representing House of Arts, HOA, James Mullen. SAS team representative. Ryan Stark out of the vault, making his way to the Fury stage. Beautiful Fury stage. I love it, right? I love it. 
It's pretty cool. Everything Ryan I've seen tonight was like Stone. brand new to me. Never seen it before. Never seen like the layout plan. So this is awesome. Yeah, I'll tell you, very exciting. Like I said, prelims, postlims, main card, everything has been super excited. I mean, we still got, what do we got? One, two, two three, many. four, five, six, seven matches left. Final seven match. Oh, okay. All right. Stark in the black and white, long sleeves. Mullen, black short sleeves. Both went to sit, but Mullen's gonna win that battle. Oh, immediately looking for that leg. Attacking yeah. the ankle. Yeah, he's got that foot to the inside. He's looking for the outside heel hook. Stark doing a good job of clearing that knee line, rolling through here. Oh. He's going to get the tap. That was pretty fast. Man, outside heel hook finish for James Mullen at HOA. He said he James don't get Mullen paid by the hour. At a house of arts. Jason right. will announce the winner. Like I said, Jay, he doesn't get paid by the hour. <laughs> he wanted to Quick get out of work. here fast. Quick work. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner by submission in 20 seconds. Out of the green corner, James Mullen. Why not show the whole match? Yeah, we got time. We and got time. it was 20 seconds. 20 seconds. So the replay <laughs> is the match. So <laughs> he is very happy. Very happy. All right. So let's check out this 20 seconds and what happened. So right off the bat, they almost both went to full. Yeah. Mullen wins that exchange. But right here, attack to that far leg, gets that right leg over, and immediately starts the attack, right? Yep. And but you see as the Stark crack, tries to yeah. roll through, he as he's rolling through, yeah. His knee was so close to being out, so close to being out, but great bite on the, on the heel, and he's going to be able to get that finish. Oh, so close Almost to being free with Stark. Oh, man. I'll tell you, he had a really tight bite on that ankle. That was, uh, or that heel. That was really tough. Really tough to get out of. Great match. Oh, another fun one coming up. All right, six-minute purple belt no-gi match coming up. 155 pounds. John Lyons taking on Vincent Aristoglio again out of HOA. To the cage representing HOA. I know we, uh, both of these guys have, uh, well, at least Ben has the MMA background. I know John is, John's brother James John's fights for us. Oh, gosh. 2-0, two, oh, two finishes will be fighting for us in August at CFFC 99. Yeah, I'll tell you, uh, John is very, very talented grappler, very exciting grappler, as is uh, Vinny Orastaglio here from HOA. Yeah, Vinny was actually supposed to fight for us once, but uh, his opponent got injured, so that never came to fruition. Good. This is going to be an exciting match, man. Vinny's got very good jujitsu. John's an attacker, man. This is going to be really fun. If John is anything like his twin brother, I expect fireworks. Yeah, John comes up to this school I teach at sometimes to uh, come and train. He's, he's fun to watch. He's fun to watch uh, compete. He's fun to watch train. He's got his brother ringside uh, supporting him. It's vice versa when he fights his brothers in the For sure. in the stands. This Who is, uh, would know you better? That's when right. you both train, man. Who would know you better? Twins too. Yeah. This Gray should be a fun one. shorts work. for Lions or Staglio in the black shorts. Lions will sit immediately, getting to close off his guard and looking for posture control. Let's see what Oristaglio does from here if he looks the postures out of this. He, you, and you see Oristaglio is not making any sudden movements. Right. He, he, he understands yeah. that, that Lions has stuff in the chamber ready to go. Right. Like we talked about earlier tonight, Jay, during the prelims, they're thinking, you know, a, a, a move or two ahead. Yep. Yep, chess, not checkers. But we play checkers. We play checkers. <laughs> We're not very good. Keeping that left hand behind that bicep, right, and that right hand. And I'll tell you what that left hand is doing, keeping that arm, that elbow, inside his shoulder line, right? If Orastaglio can get his elbows past the hips, it's going to be much more difficult to do anything from this position. But if Lyons can keep his elbows inside his shoulder lines, it's much more easy for him to attack. Two on one here, cross side. Let's see if he drags it across the body. Lyons keeping that guard closed. You see him now trying to drag that elbow to pull that arm inside the shoulder line. which is off to that right-hand grip. 
And you see how much attention Orostaglio is putting right. on just keeping his hands and elbows in line. Trying to get up, now trying to bump here, create some space as Lions. The referee's giving them time to work. The referee extraordinaire, John Combs. John Combs currently ranked number nine on the planet in the 170 pound division. Why is he grabbing? Close guard here for Lions in the bottom position. Or Staglio. Definitely, okay. All right, here's our first stalling call. Stalling on both. Double stall. They're gonna keep him in that position in the closed guard. Now the next warning is gonna lead to whoever's getting the stalling call to be put into a different position, right? The position. Yeah, I just don't understand the stalling call and leaving them where they're at, where they've been stalling, you know? So only on the initial. The okay. second one, there's a positional change. Third one, they're out. On the second call, the, the one who gets called on, the other person is gonna get the pick mount or back. Jay, what would you pick? I would pick the back. I don't think I would ever pick anything but the back. To me, it's just such a dominant, dominant position yeah. if known how to, how to use it. Or Stavio trying to kick them hips back, man. He might get, and you can see Combs, you can see the ref. Yeah. He doesn't want to do it, but he knows <laughs> yeah, he's going to have to. He might have you see to. him making the decision right now in his head, and he's saying, I have to call it. And who do you he's give gonna it to? Do it. He's going to give it to Lions, I'm assuming, because Orestoglio hasn't tried to move at all yet to pass. And I get it, you're in a dangerous guy's guard. Yeah, yeah. he's going to have to do it. Yeah. So he gets to pick. So that second stalling penalty, he's going to get to put pick the back. So here's the only thing, because he didn't move, he now has to start in a horrible, right. horrible position. Right. And, and that's tough for, for, for Vinny there because you got to be careful. He, he was in a dangerous position yeah. being in John's guard, but now John is already looking to finish here. He's across that jaw, and again, a mandible strangle is just as good. Um, yep. he, he really needs to be trying to fight those hands off to, uh, or, uh, or Staglio. You see him now trying to reach for that, that thumb to try to pull that arm back across, but good yeah, positioning. Yeah. He's going to finish. Mandible strangle finish for John Lyons. Yo, the stalling calls yeah. work. The stalling calls work. But he just scared everybody in the back. <laughs> yeah, you're in there with a dangerous grappler, but you, yeah, you got to make you got to take some chances, you know? Good call by the ref, and that's yeah. exactly why they have those rules. Let's go to Jason for the decision. Just like his brother. <laughs> Animal out there. Yep, beautiful win. The vaults, John Lyons. But I, th I thought the ref was fair, you know, gave both of them a stall warning in the beginning, so both of them should have been, Yeah. both of them should have been, you know, aware that we have to move. Yeah, here and we go the on the replay. replay from the back. Now watch, watch he'll take that right hand, he'll hide that thumb, see how his thumb's hidden behind yep. so that he can't reach it. As long as he can't get to that at the end of that lever, it's going to be incredibly right. difficult to pull that arm off. And like you said, it doesn't really matter at this point if it's underneath the chin. I don't know if people know, but there's also carotid arteries on the back of your neck too. So even in this mandible strangle position, you're actually putting pressure on the back of the neck where there's also two uh, arteries going to your brain that also you shorten that blood supply, same right. thing happens. All right. Now we're on to 155 pound purple belt, no gi, six minute match. Robert Hoskins taking on Michael Navarrete. Navarrete making his, or I'm sorry, this is uh, Robert Hoskins making his way. Hoskins actually fought for us in the amateur levels at uh, CFFC, so interesting to see how his grappling game is. Makes his way to the stage here at Fury Grappling. He's going to be taking on Michael uh, Navarrete. Be making his way to the stage. Representing Sarah BJJ, Michael Navarrete. Michael Navarrete out of Sarah BJJ. Repping the fourth stringer shirt, or rash guard. All black for Hoskins, yes. 
All right, here we go. Again, uh, purple belt match, so we are going to be at six minutes. Someone's going on the bottom. <laughs> you thinking a guard pull? <laughs> yeah. Let's, there he goes. <laughs> Navarrete didn't disappoint. You know, immediately you just trying tell, to you know? get to business, too. Underhooking at that ankle. He's looking for an entanglement very quickly. Hoskins right back into the mix, though. Not only right back into the mix, sticks his leg right back yeah. in. Recklessly just sticks that yeah. leg back in. I love it. Reckless abandon. Sticking his hand back in the cookie jar, hoping not get caught. Right? That was beautiful. Uh, knowing, you know what I mean, that yeah. his opponent is trying to attack his leg to just dive back in. That was beautiful. You know what? Why not, though? Exactly. Why not? Exactly. You want to test yourself? Why not? Top position for Hoskins. Now switches off to De La Hiva. Is Navarrete. Well well turn that leg free. Controlling the ankles from top as Hoskins looking to stack over. Goes double unders. Pushing them hips away is Navarrete. Squares himself back off. De La Hiva sits him to his hip. Hoskins trying to get back to feet. Able to get that grip underneath. He's going to look to go to the back from here. Yeah, he is. Nice. Very nice transition. Hoskins athletic enough to realize yeah. and scramble his way out and still end up on top position. Very good attempt and setup, though, by Navarrete. Yeah. Trying to get that butterfly in. Pushing away with that right shin. Just to get that reverse De La Hiva kiss of the dragon out the back door here. Ends up in a leg entanglement. Throwing that shin inside. Hoskins again, man. Everything that's getting thrown at him. Oh, look, he's on a knee bar here. Nice. He jumped for a leg of his own. Oh, he might end up with his back taken here. I like how Hoskins is in trouble, but he still attacks. Yeah. He don't care about nothing. Nah. Nothing. Now he's in on this leg again. He might give up his back here, though, because he doesn't have great control of that leg. And you see Navarrete already hooking with the shoulder. Yeah. If he's able to get his left arm over, uh, uh, over top and almost you know, go with like a seatbelt type grip. Yeah, I think now if now he takes his time, reaching, he'll yeah. be able to eventually take the back. There he goes, he scoots himself around. He does have to watch out for that knee bar still though, if Hoskins gets the right angle. Yeah, look, he'll try to truck through. He's gonna bring those legs back across to the other side. Oh, looking on a toe hold now is Hoskins. Oh, that's gonna give up the back though. Good job of Hoskins, man. Hoskins is MMA scrappy. guys are just scrappers, yeah. dude. And they're super duper athletic. Really too. are, man. Hard to submit, hard to keep down, hard to sweep. Yeah, you think he's in danger one second, and then yeah. the next he's out. Very, very nice mix tonight of your your CFFC grapplers yeah. doing very, very well, you know, on this stage in pure jiu-jitsu. Yeah, it's, it's good to see some of the display. it's good to see some of the guys that have fought for us um, try their hand at grappling. Hoskins remains in that top position. We're down to three minutes here. Trying to invert and get underneath. On the back side. Hoskins again, man, just pulls himself free. He remains top position. Goes right back in. Hoskins driving that knee forward. Addressing that top leg. Oh, man, look at this entry here through that back leg over top. Let's see, is he going to end up in, and he might end up in cross Ashi from here. Oh, man, almost. Oh, oh. There you go. He's got that uh -oh. seatbelt grip. Nice transition to the back here. Now, he, you'll see him focus on the upper body. His legs don't have to enter so quickly. As, as long as the hips are between his knees, he's got good control. There you go. Hoskins breaks that <laughs> upper body control, and he's out. Just when you think he's in danger, right? Tries to go back on that leg again. Hoskins able to retract it out. Inverts. Hoskins just spins him around, keeps him in front. And what I love about Hoskins, too, is he, he has not, like, backed off of no. the situation at all. He hasn't shied away from anything. And at 30 remains. Fury Professional Grapplings. Inaugural event here, Fury and he, Pro 1. And he's not being outclassed in any way. He's no. able to, you know, defend the submissions well and actually, you know, actually try to go for his own. There's a method to the madness. Everett trying to get some upper body control, and Hoskins again, like you said, he just drops his level down. 
easily makes it so that he can't control the upper body. Now he's tight on this leg. Let's see if he's going to try to use this to step over and pass here. Easier said than done. He's able to get that leg free as Navarrete. To the feet. Hoskins stays on a knee, still trying to cut that knee through. Less than a minute. Yeah, and again, he doesn't even do side to side or anything. Right through the middle. Like, like, like I said, just miraculously brings that leg in. <laughs> it's great. I love it. Oh, man, he's able to. Ooh, damn. Saw the danger, immediately retracted himself out of that. Navarrete throwing up that triangle, but Hoskins able to immediately get free. Can opener here. Hoskins, top position. Switch it back and forth, trying to invert to get on a leg. But again, Hoskins' upper body, his shoulders are so low that it's not able to invert and get around on it this time. Now he's almost able to get under the shoulder, and that's going to be time. I tell you what, Jay, it's going to be another tough one. Yes, it you is. Know? Yes, it is. Oh, I wouldn't want to judge this one. No. Flip a coin. I don't even know who I would give. I honestly don't know who I would give that match to. And it's not me just not having an opinion. It's just a very... Very back and forth match. I mean, Neverett was attacking. Here we go. Here's uh, some replays here on a scramble. This was the one that was almost a back take yeah. here. But again, even with that butterfly in, man, Hoskins just able to make his way back to his base, cutting that knee through. Yeah, he was where he had that grip. He was looking to invert here. He, he wasn't outclassed by any means. No, not at all. I think Jay's got the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, your decision winner out of the red corner, Michael Navarrete. <laughs> Michael uh, Navarrete out of Sarah BJJ is going to take it. And I'm, uh, and I'm assuming, man, it was that offensive how he kept attacking. Yeah. Hoskins kept yeah. defending. I'd love to see them both again. Yeah, you know? right? All right, here we go. This is going to be the last match. Heavyweight purple belt, no gi match, six minute match. Julian Wait, Flannery out of the, the Matt Factory the taking on Sean Johnson out, out of Pinelands BJJ. Corner. Representing Pinelands BJJ, Sean Johnson. Sean Johnson out of Pinelands BJJ under Garrett Lavaggi making his way to the stage now. Big boys for the Big last boys. match of the evening, huh? Reinforced the cage, <laughs> reinforced the, the stage. Julian Flannery out of the Matt Factory. Again, this pro boat match will be six minutes. No gi, so all subs His are a go. Representing Matt Factory, out of the right corner, Julian Flannery. Julian Flannery making his way up to the stage here out of the Matt Factory. He'll be in the black and white, black and red for Johnson. Run all around right. just in case, you know. That's all. Feeling the, you know, feeling the <laughs> stage out. Warm up. <laughs> They're purple belts, so that's, that's a warm up for them. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Shot at nice. my jujitsu friends. Oh, Flannery already, like, fainting. Already shown faints. Johnson clearly has the height advantage. Yeah. Let's see if he can use it to his advantage. And he goes down. Oh, man, he was looking for that sacrifice yep. sacrifice throw. Um, oh, man, and look at this. Triangle. He's on an arm already. Oh, I, yeah. Yeah, he's got the leg over, uh, like, in the, in the triangle form, but that arm is caught. Trying to posture up here is Flannery, and he will. He'll be able to almost pass her. And look at this. Oh, throw on the knee bar here. He doesn't have great control of the legs. No. He'll either have to uh, uh, trap both legs together or find his right leg right. inside. Flannery posturing out. Now he's now got that, now that right leg over. Now it's going to be some trouble. If he can get his, his hand to the toes, literally to the toes, he'll be able to move that leg incredibly easily. But again, easier said than done. Yeah, Flannery Trying looks to pull like he's on out the of calf trouble. or ankle makes it difficult. But if you can get to the toes, man, the end of that lever pulls that whole leg. Half guard here for Johnson. 
I, I give him credit, man. He went for that sacrifice yeah. throw and then immediately in on the. And he uh, stayed on the attack at all times. Lenora up to the feet. Or Flannery, I'm sorry, up to the feet. Seated guard here. He's trying to throw the feet to the side. Johnson gets that right leg in. Back to half guard here. Pushing that head away. He's tight. You see him. He's trying that little. His hands are locked right underneath the, the hips. Now he was able to break that free. He's going to try to sprawl back to pass, but easier said than done. Two on one here. Johnson trying to pass it. Oh, nice, nice little, little nice bump sweep. sweep there. Back to the feet. Staff guys better be ready. Yeah, they are. No, they all backed away. Where'd they all go? Yeah, they're like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Smart guys. Holding center position here. Julian Flannery. Out of the mat factory, Mercy grips. Thailand's Sean Johnson. Went for that sacrifice throw early. Ended up on bottom. Had some decent attacks, but yeah. now we find our way back to the feet. Oh, in on that single, trying to drag him to the ground. Good sprawl out yeah. here by Johnson. Connects the head and arm. Flannery back to the feet. Made him hold his weight for a little bit. Nice little arm drag attempt here by Johnson. Playing right on the edge here, too. Oh. All right. But I missed that. Was that a slip or did I don't he know. Foot I don't know if he him? went I down to the bottom or tried to, okay. you know, throw him again like he did the other time. Man, heavy pressure here trying to break through is Flannery. Johnson framing here, getting that shin in front. See him trying to get to that far leg. Man, he may be trying to attack to that far leg again. It's Johnson. He don't attack like a big guy, he, man. No, he doesn't. Training at Pinelands, BJJ. Under Garrett Labaji. Top position still, halfway through. Two and a half remain here. And Flannery, he's got that arm weaved through, uh, you know, but he's going to have to drop that knee. Honestly, he would probably be better off standing up yeah. and, and forcing uh, Johnson to have to move side to side rather than straight through him. I mean, Flannery's a uh, patient, you know. Very. Try now. He scoots by. Now he'll cross into side control. His nice. patience worked. Yep. His patience worked. Cross side, uh, Sean Johnson already has that right arm underneath, blocking that hip to stop the mount. But also look for a, a, a quick motion where he'll lift that arm and turn his hips to try to free himself. And Jay, this is a common position we've seen all night where they can either go for the Kimura, north south. For sure. Johnson get out of danger. And again, he did it again. That right hand was underneath, just uses it to bridge, push, gets himself back into half guard here. Now, again, we're in this situation, though. We're a guy on top, you know, Flannery. It's not like Flannery's been sitting still. No. You know what I mean? He's been, no. he's been trying to pass, and he did. He was successful in, in getting a pass. Um, but Johnson's definitely been throwing up the attacks. He's been aggressive. He's oh, in on that arm again. Wow. Look at this from oh, the guard. Oh, oh. Belly down. He's trying to step over top. He's Flannery. It's going to put oh, him. Oh, my gosh. Almost out of bounds. I'm getting nervous. Wow. Dude, uh, arm bar from the guard from guys this size and for yeah, it to almost pull see, off like this. You don't see that. You don't see that. Beautiful. Man, I, that's going to mean something on the judges. Flannery now, he's looking for, oh, man, looking for the yeah. anaconda, but his hands are his hands are in the wrong position and his hands are underneath. A lot of times with this anaconda or dars, it's good to lock your hands up outside the armpits or outside the neck. Yeah. That way their opponent can't reach the hands. Where the hands are positioned now, Sean's able to break free. And I'm, and I'm a little surprised that the ref hasn't stopped him and put him in the center because you're limiting Flannery's uh, capability to move around, and he finally does. And giving the front row mild heart attacks. Right. <laughs> Especially with the big boys. Right back on top, referee's position. Good job by ref Dave. Back to the center here for these big boys. 20 seconds. We're short time here, Arius. Rolls through. All 
All right, final seconds here. Gets again, passes into side control. Oh man, this is such a hard match to yeah. judge, man. I, I like that. Um, I like the, the submission attempts by Johnson. Though. Yeah, if I was strong, a judge, which strong. you know, really tough, but. All right, we're going to take it to the judges' decision. Again, strong submission attempts by Johnson. Yeah. Flannery with some passing. So let's, he, see what, let's see what weighed out here. Yeah, and this is one of the ones that you wish maybe could have went a little bit longer. All right, we toss it down to Jason for the call. All right. Waiting for the decision to come in. Refs having a good time. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. That armbar from guard was so Beautiful. impressive. Beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, impressive. your winner by decision out of the red corner, Julian Flannery. Julian Flannery is going to take it by decision. Jay, great night. Cage Fury Grappling 1 is in the books. Um, those of you out there, don't forget, CFFC 98 is tomorrow. Get UFC Fight Pass. You can check that out tomorrow night. And you can also check out Danielle Kelly. Jay, talk about Danielle before we sign off. Danielle, huge rear naked choke finish uh, over the number four ranked Sofia Amarante. Uh, had some great attacks the whole time, but getting on the back and able to finish was huge. Such a great night here uh, at Fury Professional Grappling. I can't wait till two. Let's do it again. Sounds good, man. Thanks, Jay. Good night from the 2300 Arena.